Hello everybody. I am Dr. Farhan Zameer from Biotechnica Bangalore. For today, we will look into things to know to become an effective bioinformatic researcher. Let's dive in. Welcome back. So for today, we will look into the key characteristics for a given researcher if he is trying to become an effective bioinformatician. Now, please remember to become an effective bioinformatician, the first and the foremost characteristic is one is you need to have a patience. You need to have patience to sit for a very longer duration in front of a computer so that you are able to communicate well because here comes the problem. You speak a different language, a computer speaks a different language. So here you should make it a, 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 a proper you know, bifurcation that whether you are trying to utilize the tools which are already available or the packages which are already available for analyzing data, point number one, or you are interested in programming a particular algorithm for analysis of a data. So these are the two important components. These are the two parallel lines. Many a times they don't meet each other. So hence it becomes very, very important because you will be having a proficiency in biology and not in computer science. So Remember, if you do not have a foundation in programming, it is always better to get, get upgraded. Otherwise, you know, you will find difficulties in understanding biology. So the first and important thing is you need to sit for long hours in front of the computer and communicate with the computer so that the effectivity is is at a such a level so that the computer actually gives you very, very specific answers and this answers will be able to, you know, uh, it will help you in deciphering very important key components of your research. So moving on forward, you need to have a proficiency to identify patterns. So identification of patterns in a huge data gives you the power to become an effective bioinformatician. Now here comes the deal. Now if you look into the entire sequence, genome sequence, or if you are trying to do comparative genomics, now you have a huge amount of data from humans, or you have a huge amount of data from a, a murine model, and you have a huge amount of data from a Drosophila or a C. elegans model. Now, how do you compare? The, the, the protein present at one component of the human and the protein present with that of the, the murine model and the protein present with a, a Drosophila or a C. elegans model. So here you need to have a 360 degree view of your ideology and also remember throughout the process there are a high amount of distractions because you are sitting on a computer, you are interested with the protein, you start with a particular research but however at the end of the day there are a high amount of distractions so that you can get distracted from the aim and objective of your research. So staying focused is very very important and very importantly is you need to be able to identify or recognize patterns. Now a very good example would be this. Now. When I look into this particular structure, looks beautiful and in this particular structure, there is only one or two components which are differing. Now, you should be in a position to identify this uniqueness. Now, remember, if I consider this as a protein structure, you should be able to know what would be the key component which can actually contribute for the stability of the protein or which are the key components which are responsible for the folding up of the protein in its three dimensional structure and by any point of time, you should also understand the biochemistry of this particular protein. Now, if it is a catalytic protein, then you need to understand the enzymology component of it. Or if it, it is just a protein which is catering as a substrate, then you need to understand the proteomic component of that particular protein. So hence, understanding the key component because here there is, uh, you know, the entire protein is not involved in the reaction or the entire biomolecule is not, you know, interacting with a particular ligand molecule. And hence, it becomes very, very important to identify among the huge amino acids or among the huge monomeric units which unit is actually interacting with that of your drug and understanding these key components becomes very, very crucial. Now, once you understand bioinformatics, once you understand the dry lab of it, now slowly, slowly you need to authenticate it using uh, the other advanced technologies which are available still on an in silico modeling. Now, here comes the component of peak identification, peak differentiation, classification of your patterns, clustering of your patterns becomes very, very important. And hence, you know, using databases such as string database or a stitch database, which are responsible for under understanding the chemical 
and protein interaction or many a times it is in a string database you are trying to establish associations with you know protein with another protein or how do I understand this protein and protein in terms of its metabolism and hence I need to bring in a third parameter and this third parameter is your KEG database. So putting all these together you need to develop a story please remember to become an effective bioinformatician the very important component is remember you are a director of a movie you are a director of your research you you know you know how to how to handle the individual characters of your play and you are the the uh, you know the master of the entire orchestra so pulling up strings at a right uh, point at a right uh, time becomes very very crucial because this will drive the entire result oriented data now you know since the data is very huge it is it is very very common that many a times you miss out with the very important data and then you end up with certain data which is you know almost not significant or totally uh, you know a crap data so hence at that point of time getting frustrated is actually common in bioinformatics and hence what we need to do is understanding patterns and understanding and correlating that with your hypothesis and with your statistical validation becomes very very important. Now uh, the major key features is one pre uh, processing of your data. So what we do is normally when we go for a big data analysis we do not jump in with huge amount of data. So what we do is in terms of its pilot project we take up sample data and you know around with a population of around 2 to 5 or 2 to 10 we'll try to run it up so that we understand a basic pattern once we understand the pattern this this pattern or this particular algorithm or the matrix is being utilized for a big data so we do not waste time and also we know what we are looking at because the population is very very small it is actually very easy to understand patterns and to decipher the the, the hidden secrets in that particular code so pre processing of the data becomes very very important example uh, especially in uh, dna sequencing sequencing data gives you you know huge amount of data so uh, this this particular technology gives you both uh, crap data uh, which we call it as chimeras or which we call it as you know unwanted repeats and also a very very important data now the problem is how do i fish the important data with that of the uh, the unwanted data or how do i filter the chimeras now just uh, believe me my dear friends around 70 to 75 percent of the data is a chimeric data so i need to remove this chimeric data from the the real reads so uh, you know utilizing certain softwares using utilizing chopping softwares you are you know giving up strong commands which will be always helpful and hence you know pre-processing of your data which is you know error proof is the key when you start with bioinformatics processing then this comes with transformation now what are you looking at are you looking at a, a genomic level proteomic level or transcriptomic level or you know metabolomic level you need to decide because many of the students what they think is you know because it is bioinformatics i have the computer i have the tools i will try to analyze everything this cannot be done please remember for becoming an effective bioinformatician so you need to follow a rule of an inverted pyramid so you start with the problem and then as you as you proceed the problem should go on to a, a peak okay so this should be an inverted peak so that you know you have one solution you have one conclusion for your entire problem and hence we always recommend an inverted pyramid so once you have transformed the data the very important component is model the data so once you model the data you need to use those data sets you remember we spoke about the pilot data sets we need to process the pilot data sets through this particular model and then see whether the model qualifies the data framework okay and once this has been done you analyze the data and once you analyze the data then interpretation becomes very 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 important now once you have the data interpreted then you can go for data acquisition. So among the entire data, not all data had to be documented and hence for the process of publication or for the process of a patent, what you need to do is you need to document a very key feature of your findings and you know, capturing that particular very key feature is nothing but data acquisition. So these are the various steps in which you can become an effective bioinformatician. Now at the end, all bioinformatics if you need to be your data if you need to be very very strong then your bioinformatic work has to be validated many a times when i talk to hardcore bioinformaticians they say that you know we are just bioinformaticians and we are not bothered about the data validation now data validation comes with the wet lab system so 
it becomes very very crucial it becomes very very important that it is not just you learn the the dry lab techniques but it becomes equally important that you also learn the wet lab techniques in most of the labs the work has been bifurcated the work has been allocated as a dry lab work and a wet lab work somebody does something and that has been transferred on to the wet lab now how i strongly recommend that it is always important the person who has done the dry lab if he is able to repeat the wet lab it becomes very very important so that even many a times a negative data what and for an other person could be a very very relevant data for the person who has actually done the in silico system so it becomes very very important that the person knows the bioinformatician knows both the dry lab and the wet lab lab rather than you know depending on somebody or outsourcing the data it becomes important that in the same lab you utilize the facility and then try to prove the hypothesis whatever you had actually formulated at the beginning of your research work so with all these tips and tactics I am sure that you can become a very very effective bioinformatician all the very best thank you